Hello, my dear. I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology faculty of Medicine Mansour University. The topic of my lecture today about abnormal uterine bleeding. So what we wanted to discuss today? The definitions, epidemiology, terminology, causes, classification of leomyoma, diagnosis of abnormal uterine bleeding, differential diagnosis, and lastly, the treatment. So let us start our journey with the update in the definition of the normal menstrual cycle according to FIGO 2011, updated in 2018. Normal menstrual cycle has a frequency of 24 to 38 days. I mean 31 day plus or minus 7. Okay? And the duration of the menstrual flow from four to eight days and the amount of the menstrual flow about five to 80 milliliter of blood loss. And variation of the menstrual cycle length measured over 12 months less than 20 days. So the regularity depend on if the variation less than 20 days over the 12 months, so this is regular. If it is more than that, so it is irregular. Okay? What about the abnormal uterine bleeding? This is a broad term. Describe abnormalities in the menstrual cycle and involving frequency, regularity, duration and the volume of flow. What is the definition of intermenstrual bleeding? Is the bleeding that occurs between otherwise normal menstrual periods. So what about the epidemiology? Really it is a common problem in population. This common symptom with a prevalence of 10 to 30 percent among women in reproductive age, with higher incidence with extremity of age in around the menarche and in perimenopause. Iron deficiency anemia develop in 21 to 67 percent of cases due to abnormal uterine bleeding. Chronic heavy or prolonged uterine bleeding can result in anemia, also interfere with daily activities, and raise concerns about uterine cancer. So you should reassure your patient. You can consider abnormal uterine bleeding as a chronic if has occurred for most of the previous six months, or acute when an episode of heavy bleeding warrants immediate intervention. A revised terminology system for abnormal uterine bleeding was suggested by FIGO in 2011 and the goal avoiding poorly defined or confusing term used previously like what? Like menorrhagia, which is excessive and, and or prolonged administration, or menometrorrhagia, irregular bleeding and heavy menstruation, or oligomenorrhea, prolonged or infrequent menstruation. So these expressions no more used. We are using the expression of abnormal uterine bleeding and intramenstrual bleeding and it is quite enough for us. And we are using the system suggested by FIGO, depend on the, the palm coin system. Okay? So, you turn heavy menstrual bleeding. What does it mean? It means cyclic menses that are heavy or prolonged. It doesn't refer to heavy 
or, or prolonged bleeding that occur in patients with ovulatory dysfunction. So, if you are talking about heavy menstrual bleeding, this means this cycle is ovulatory. Okay? But if there is ovulatory dysfunction, I'm not going to say him heavy menstrual bleeding, but I'm going to say abnormally trying bleeding. And beside it, I put a letter O, means ovulatory dysfunction. Okay? The term heavy menstrual bleeding replace the term menorrhagia, which was previously used to describe heavy or prolonged uterine bleeding. Menorrhagia is a less precise word because it doesn't differentiate between volume and the duration of bleeding or between cyclic and anovulatory bleeding. Because we used the expression menorrhagia a lo long time ago, whatever it is ovulatory or anovulatory, we are using menorrhagia. But nowadays, if we use the term heavy menstrual bleeding, we mean that there is heavy menses but in ovulatory cycle. But if the cycle anovulatory, there is no ovulation, we are not using the term heavy menstrual bleeding, we'll use abnormally trying bleeding, abnormally trying bleeding, AUB, and beside it, letter O means ovulatory dysfunction. If the cycle recurs less than 24, we are calling frequent cycle if coming more than 38 days it is infrequent cycle amenorrhea means no menstruation for 90 days primary amenorrhea absent monarchy by 15 years of age secondary amenorrhea amenorrhea for six months with previously regular menstrual cycle mini pause Amenorrhea for 12 months without other apparent cause due to depletion of the ovarian follicle. Precocious menstruation means menarche before 9 years of age. What about the palm coin classification system? Palm P for polyp, A for adenomyosis, L for for leomyoma, M for malignancy and endometrial hyperplasia, C for coagulopathy, O for ovulatory dysfunction, E for endometrial factor, I for iatrogenic causes, N for not yet classified. Okay? Okay, again, the palm coin classification doesn't include the term dysfunctional uterine bleeding. So, there is no more use of this expression, dysfunctional uterine bleeding, okay, in this system. This is the palm coin system. This is the causes of the bleeding suggested in 2011 and updated in 2018 by FIGO. What is the difference? The palm, this is the first portion, describes structural issues. As you see, polyp, adenomyosis, leomyoma, malignancy, and so on. Okay? While the second portion, coin, describes non structural issue. The last letter N, not otherwise classified. Okay. This is a picture show you the Balm coin classification. This is a structural and this is a non-structural. Or somebody call it functional causes. Okay. This is the classification of leomyoma. There is eight types, as you see, starting from inside to outside. Leomyoma zero, type zero. 
completely intracavitary and pedunculated. Type 1, intracavitary, but less than 50% intramural. Type 2, more than or equal to 50% intramural. Type 3, contact the endometrium. As you see here in the picture, it is intramural, just contact the endometrium. Type 4, completely intramural. Doesn't contact the endometrium, completely intramural. Okay? This is type 4. Type 5, starting the subserous. More than or equal to 50% intramural, as you see here. More than or equal to 50% intramural. And the remaining is on the surface. Type 6, subserosal, less than 50% intramural. Type 7, subserous, bedunculated with a pedicle. So type 7, subserous, L7, subserous, and bedunculated. So, the submucus include 0, 1, and 2. And the subserous include 5, 6, and 7. What about type 8? Type 8, any other fibroid in anywhere, like cervical fibroid, parasitic fibroid, round ligament fibroid, so, eight for other fibroids in world. Okay? What is the hybrid leomyoma? It range between two and five. Between the submucosal and the sub and the sub series. Between two and the five. This is, is called hybrid leomyoma. But each with less than half the diameter in the endometrial and peritoneal cavity, respectively. So, less than 50% bulging and the outside on the surface, and less than 50% also bulging to the cavity. So, between two and the five. Okay? This is called hybrid leomyoma. This is the old classification for the causes, general causes, local causes, and dysfunctional, and you are not going to use this expression anymore. Let us understand the non-structural causes, which represent the coil. C for coagulopathy. Approximately 20% of patients with heavy, menstruation, with heavy menstruation have a bleeding disorder. And this is, by the way, is common in adolescent girls. Von Willebrand disease and platelet dysfunction are the most common coagulopathies associated with abnormally trained bleeding. In addition to heavy menstrual bleeding, adolescent with bleeding disorder may report irregular menstrual bleeding. What about ovulatory dysfunction? may occur with many endocrinological disorders, including thyroid dysfunction, androgen excess, Cushing syndrome, hyperprolactinemia, hypothalamus pituitary axis abnormalities. So, any endocrinological disorders in this category of ovulatory dysfunction. Infrequent or absent ovulation during the first few years after menarche and during perimenopause is common and not necessarily a sign of underlying pathology. Abnormal bleeding caused by ovulatory dysfunction is often irregular, heavy, or prolonged. So, the ovulatory dysfunction associated with bleeding may be irregular, heavy, and prolonged. What about the endometrial factor? 
primary disorders of the endometrial hemostasis typically occur in the setting of predictable ovulatory cycles and are likely due to vasoconstriction disorders, inflammation or infection. So this endometrial factor could be related to the vasoconstriction disorders, inflammation or infection. And the endometrial dysfunction is poorly understood, really. And there are no reliable diagnostic method, and it should be considered only after other causes are excluded. What about the iatrogenic? Iatrogenic may occur with certain drugs like COC, for example. Bricks root bleeding is a common side effect with some COC pills. So, other drugs also can cause bleeding, like tamoxifen, anticoagulant, dopamine antagonist, antidepressant, and the antipsychotics. All of these can cause also bleeding. So, we consider it iatrogenic, and we can change either change the drug. In case of pills causing bleeding, we can change the pill using uh, levonorgestrel releasing intra intrauterine system, or using another pill with uh, different dose and different type of gestagen and the higher dose of estrogen, maybe. So I can manage by changing the drug, which causes bleeding. If the drug is vital, I can deal with the situation in different way by giving non-specific hemostatics and so on. So, okay. So, if I can change the drug given, I'll do it to stop the bleeding, of course. Like in case of bells, breaks through bleeding, I can stop it and replace it by another one. Not otherwise classified. This is the last one in palm coin system. N, letter N, not otherwise classified. This category contains poorly understood conditions, rare disorders like arteriovenous malformation that don't otherwise fit into the classification system. Okay? Also, there is Ismocele or caesarean scar defect can cause post menstrual spotting. You will find the lady has a previous history of caesarean section and she will tell you during menstruation that when the menstruation stopped, she found some spotting in the later days. Okay, this if you did an ultrasound for her with TBS, you may find the niche of the scar and the defect in the scar. This is ismosil. This is maybe the cause of bleeding. Okay. Or maybe AV malformation. This is under the category not otherwise classified. We wanted to diagnose a case of abnormal tribe bleeding first. We should take full history taking, including the age, gravidity, parity, complaint, menstrual pattern, intermenstrual and post bleeding, sexual activity, any history of trauma, systemic disease, medical problem, current contraception if using it, medications taken by the patient and documented investigation, Family history is important. You should ask about family history of coagulopathy, malignancy, endocrine disorder. We should take also social history, including tobacco, alcohol, and the drug use, occupation. You should take also surgical history if there is previous gynecologic surgery like DNC, and so on, so, or general surgery before or not, like cytodectomy or whatever. Okay? Then, completely, should take the menstrual history completely, in detail. Okay? 
what is important for us as regard the new definition of the menstrual cycle the frequency of the cycle described as a frequent if less than 24 normal if between 24 to 38 or infrequent if coming more than 38 days every 38 days or more okay we are, we are saying this is infrequent cycle. what about regularity the change between the cycle and the other plus or minus two days okay or we can calculate the deviation or the variation all over the year in 12 months if you found that less than 20 days so it is regular if we found that more than 20 days so this is irregular what about the duration of menstrual flow greater than eight days we call it prolonged or a heavy menstrual okay between four to eight days this is normal less than four days is called short in the menstrual flow okay what about the volume the volume of the flow as you see in this picture is different of course this is minimal and this is more heavy okay or most heavy normal amount lost 5 to 80 milliliter we can say heavy if more than 80 milliliter we can say light if less than 5 milli of blood loss exact volume measurements are difficult to determine as you know but you can ask the patient about the frequency of sanitary product changes during each day if there is blood clots in the menstrual flow or not small or large clots if there is bright red color blood if she need to change sanitary products during the night and the floating sensation present so all these are criteria suggesting heavy menstruation okay blood clots frequent changing the sanitary product changing during night floating sensation presence of bright bright red color blood and the presence of blood clots as i said what about examination general abdominal and the local examination general for vital signs measure the blood pressure measure the body mass index signs of pallor and skin and the mucosa if there is any galactorea thyroid enlargement as in this picture hirsutism maybe a hyperandrogenism moon face abnormal fat distribution and the stria characteristic of Cushing syndrome if there is any other signs of coagulopathy like bruising like petechi burbra eruption abdominal examination to feel any abdominal or pelvic abdominal mass also for palpation of the abdominal organ liver and the spleen liver cirrhosis may be associated with coagulopathy and abnormally trying bleeding and the bleeding from body orifices pelvic examination including speculum and the bimanual of course inspection bb sorry inspection speculum bb and the bimanual examination why i'm doing it searching for sign of infections lesions polyps fibroid laceration if i found cervix suggesting cin i can take bab smear also i can do culture for sexually transmitted disease like 
chlamydia and the gonorrhea. What is the investigation needed? Lab investigation. First, exclude pregnancy. And please remember that maybe the cause of abnormal uterine bleeding is a complication of pregnancy like miscarriage or ectopic pregnancy. And the patient may not have any idea about that she is pregnant. Okay? So just she came to you complaining of abnormal breathing. She don't know she is pregnant, but this is when you did the pregnancy test, you found her a pregnant, and this is a complication of pregnancy, this bleeding. So please don't forget, so long as the patient and the child bearing age, not past menopause, you should do HCG or urine pregnancy test and confirm by serum PT HCG. Also do CBC, serum for routine, PSH, prolactin, estradiol level, progesterone level, dehydroandrosterone sulfate, fetal testosterone, do coagulation profile, liver function test, fasting insulin, because of hyperinsulinemia or insulin resistance, and cervical culture if you are suggesting sexual transmitted infection. Of course, I'll ask for an investigation needed according to the history and examination. I'll ask to confirm my diagnosis by a certain investigation. So I'm not asking all of this. I'll ask what I need, okay? Then imaging like transvaginal sonography is very important to, uh, to diagnose uterine leomyoma, adenomyosis, ovarian tumor, ovarian cyst, polycystic ovarian morphology, or other pelvic pathology. Also can detect endometrial sickness. As you see here, this is second endometrium. Imagine the difference. You can see differentiate the, this is the sun endometrium. This is the sick endometrium. But really, the sickness of endometrium is more important in postmenopause because there is cutoff. It should be less than five or less than four millimeter. Uh, so if it is less than four millimeter, it is unlikely to have endometrial carcinoma. Okay. So also can detect fibroid, as in this picture. This is normal ovary. This is growing follicle, and this is PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome or we call it polycystic ovarian morphology by ultrasound okay we can also do saline infusion sonography or sonosterography this picture show you saline infusion sonography we inject saline through polycaster to fill the trying cavity so i can see endometrial polyp which cannot be seen without contrast like cloth like saline injected inside the cavity okay this is saline infusion sonography, SIS. Also, another tool is sonohysterography, injecting contrast inside the uterus and do TDS. Also helpful to see any endometrial polyps and to see the dye passing through the tubes. This is called sonohysterography. MRI may be needed in some cases if you are in query about diagnosis, you want to confirm, so you may need MRI. Hysteroscopy can be used as a diagnostic and therapeutic also for diagnosis of intracavitary lesion like polyp, like submucous fibroid, also can be used for polypectomy or for resection of a small submucous fibroid four centimeter or less. So the rule of hysteroscopy to visualize the intracavitary lesion and diagnostic and maybe therapeutic also. Also in presence of adhesions, adhesolysis, or cutting of adhesion by scissor. As is here in the picture, this is a resection of the polyp. Endometrial biopsy should be performed on women at high risk for hyperplegia or malignancy, of course, and sent for histopathological evaluation, the biopsy, 
and it is considered first line test in women with abnormal trunk bleeding who are 45 years or older. Should also be performed in women younger than 45 with unopposed estrogen exposure, such as women with obesity or polycystic ovarian syndrome, as well as for women after failure of treatment of resistant bleeding. So, suppose you are giving treatment for a, a lady in a child bearing age and there is no response to treatment. So you are in need for endometrial biopsy. Okay? So either because she advanced age, she's advanced age above 45, or because she has prolonged unopposed estrogen exposure as in polycystic ovarian syndrome, or for women after failure of treatment or the resistance of bleeding in spite of treatment. Okay? This is how to take the biopsy by DNC, by the curet, or by pepple, using pepple biopsy. Pap smear may be needed in some cases. What is the differential diagnosis? First, pregnancy complication like miscarriage or ectopic pregnancy. Then, for other genital bleeding from the vulva, maybe due to benign lesions or malignancies or inflammation or trauma for vagina, also benign lesions or sexual transmitted infection or vaginitis, foreign body or trauma or malignancy or from the cervix, from cervical lesions, polyp, ectopy, sexual transmitted infection or malignancy from fallopian tubes and the ovaries, pelvic inflammatory disease, tumors, especially the sex cord stromal tumors including estrogen causing abnormal front bleeding, uterus, you can differentiate the palm coin system, urinary tract infections or malignancy, GIT like inflammatory bowel syndrome, what is the treatment of AUB? Abnormal trauma bleeding treatment depends on multiple factors. Like what? Like the etiology, the fertility desire, wanna be, the woman wanna to be pregnant or not, the clinical stability of the patient, if she is acute case or chronic, other medical comorbidity in the patient, okay? So, my treatment will depend all on all these factors. And the treatment will be individualized based on this factor. In general, we'll start mostly with the medical treatment first, okay? Let us see if we have a patient with acute bleeding and if we have a patient with a chronic, chronic bleeding, okay? For acute, I, I may give an emergency intravenous conjugated equine estrogen for hemodynamically unstable. I'll give 25 milligrams large dose intravenous every four to six hours for up to 24 hours. But if hemodynamically stable, I'll give 2.5 milligram orally every six hours for 21 days. Don't forget, to follow treatment with, proge with progestin, like norisindrone or norisindrone, to provoke withdrawal bleeding, okay? Or I can give the patient combined oral contraceptive pills, one monophysic pills containing 35 micrograms sinaris radiol, three times daily for seven days. Of course, this is a large dose also, okay? Three times daily for seven days. Oral progestin, I can give the patient nor a syndrome, five milligram orally, three times daily for seven days. Also, I can give the patient toranexamic acid, prevent fibrin degradation, and it can be used to treat acute abnormal trend bleeding in a dose of 10 milligram per kilogram intravenous every eight hour, or 20 to 25 milligram per kilogram orally every eight hours. 
I can insert casterol, like false casterol, like this one, with a bulb, and inflate it. Mechanical compression will stop the bleeding and can be left in place for several hours up to two days. But this is temporary solution to stop the horrible bleeding or the severe bleeding. Okay. What about if the case chronic, chronic abnormally dry bleeding, not acute? Okay. I'll give COC, but one pill per day as as usual, one pill only with senile estradiol 35 microgram or I'll give levonorgestrel releasing the intratrans system or I'll give the patient progestin in the form of norisimbrone 2.5 to up to 5 milligram orally once daily either cyclic for 21 days and rest seven day or continuous all the the month and you repeat it without interruption this is means continuous so either cyclic with seven days rest or continuous non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can be given like naproxen 500 milligram two times daily Tranexamic acid, 1,000 milligram orally three times daily. Like tranexamic acid, like this picture, two tablets three times daily. Then the treatment will depend on the cause, according to the Paul McCoyne. You remember Paul McCoyne acrony? Okay. If we have a polyp, we try polyp treated by surgical resection, by stroscopy or keratage. If there is adenomyosis, I can do strectomy or adenomyomectomy or medical treatment by giving medication, anti-estrogen like GnRH agonist and so on. Leomyoma can be managed by myomectomy or hysterectomy or urethral artery embolization or hysteroscopic resection or levonorgestrel releasing intratrine device malignancy or hyperplasia can treat it by surgical strectomy, total strectomy and bilateral cervicalectomy plus adjuvant treatment if needed according to the stage progestins and high dose when surgery not an option or palliative therapy such as radiotherapy in case of endometrial hyperplasia, I can manage so long as there is no atibia, can give progestin therapy for three to six months. But if there is atypical endometrial hyperplasia, hysterectomy is a better solution so long as the patient completed their family size and need no more children. Coagulopathy causing abnormal trine bleeding can be treated by tranexamic acid and desmopressine. This is the tranexamic acid given by injection and this is the desmopressine used for coagulopathy. Involved brand these. Avalatory dysfunction treated through According to the cause, is it PCOS, obesity, lifestyle modification is important. Metformin for patient with insulin resistance, induction of ovulation if the patient wanna to be pregnant. Endocrine disorders should be corrected using appropriate medication like gabargolin in hyperprolactinemia is given or levothyroxine in hypothyroidism. Endometrial disorder have no specific treatment as mechanisms are not clearly defined up to now. What about the iatrogenic? Based on the offending drug, in certain contraception, I can change it. Okay. Also, I can 
if I'm using cover T, I, I can use and the closing reading or or tells a closing reading. I can use leave registral ID will decrease the menstrual flow. Or I can change the bells to another one. Individual therapy should be tailored based on the patient reproductive wishes and medical comorbidities. What about if the patient fall in the category not otherwise classified in causes of abnormal thrombin bleeding? If suggesting endometritis give antibiotics for infection, if suggesting arteriovenous malformation, we can manage it by embolization, recaster, and do embolization to the branches with the thrombin vessel in case of arteriovenous malformation. For cases with isthmocele, as in this picture by TBS, this is the defect in the cesarean scar causing isthmocele, and the blood passes through it, as in this picture also. This is the niche of the defect. Okay, I can manage it vaginally, surgically corrected, or laparoscopy, and this is the best, especially in patient wanna to preserve her fertility. Laparoscopy is the best. Or vaginally or through hysteroscopy. All this is the three lines of treatment. The improvement rate is 92% in case of laparoscopy and the 82% in case of vaginal. Hysteroscopic surgery, the quickest procedure to perform and is effective in removing the upper valve to promote the elimination of the hematocele and the symptoms of abnormal leading hysterectomy is the definitive and the most effective treatment for abnormal uterine bleeding and it yields a high level of patient satisfaction indicated in certain cases as a first choice but in some cases may be delayed if and they take the decision of hysterectomy after failure of other lines of treatment for hysterectomy, yes, definitive and the most effective treatment of abnormal uterine bleeding. What is the alternative for hysterectomy? Is the endometrial ablation, as in this picture, less invasive, lower risk surgical option, which is as effective as levonorgestrel releasing intrauterine system. This is the levonorgestrel releasing intrauterine system. Those found the result of this intrauterine system is similar to endometrial ablation. Imagine in many studies, those found the result the same in controlling the bleeding. So it's something very nice. So I can use the less, the more, the less invasive one, which is the marina or levonorgestrel intrauterine system, or I can use endometrial ablation alternative to stack. Thank you. I'm Dr. Alamus Bouh, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University.